Still, Sherman, we made it through. Yeah. Just barely through this week. Are you ready to go? Because I was looking at the standings this morning. Braves lead the NL East by 11 and a half games. And oh, by the way, Max Fried coming back. They didn't do a whole lot in terms of starters at the deadline. This was it, I guess. They lead by 11 half. The other five divisions, if you combine it, yeah. is a total of nine games. Just to give you how far the Braves are ahead of everybody else. I thought of this because of the trade deadline. By this time, everybody's pretty much brought up their top prospects yeah. who are contenders. Everybody, you can't make a trade anymore. So how can you get better? Well, the Braves could get better starting today. They, they can because of this big lead. They know they're going to win their sixth straight NL East title. They want to get right for the postseason. Well, Max Fried is their ace. Both him and he finished second for the Cy Young last year. Kyle Wright won 21 games. Both of these guys haven't pitched since early May. They've combined for 10 starts. But Freed is your game one starter if he's right. You push Strider to two, Morton to three, Wright to four. The team you think is going to be the favorite to win the World Series right now. Think about what this looks like if they could get Freed and Wright back. We asked this question the other day. I'd love your opinion. The biggest threat to the Braves in the National League is what team? Does it, is it the Dodgers? Is it the Padres? Is it what, what, what comes to mind? I mean, I actually think they're the, the, the class. I actually think if they'd be in bet, I don't think they'd want to see the Phillies in a short series again. I think a lot of people would agree with you. What about the Reds? They did very little in terms of adding at the deadline. And their, their need for a starter was glaring. Hunter Green coming back in two weeks' time. It's still two weeks, and they have some ground to make up a little well, bit. Well, it'll be interesting to see Freed against the Cubs because the Cubs just beat up the Reds mm. uh, pitching. The Reds pitching in, in that, the starting pitchers in that series, 22 runs in 11 and two-thirds innings. Right, you got uh, Ben Lively who had to go on the injured list, and two rookies just start, starting to wonder about their innings this year. Abbott and Williamson. Well, this team was built in some ways, both short and long term, to have Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo pitching that one was the two. Vision, sure. Right, like Green is the second pick overall in 2017. Uh, Lodolo is the seventh pick overall in 2019. They think they're going to get Green back at about August 20th. He just made his first rehab start. Lodolo had a calf injury. He's been out almost all season. They're hoping by the end of this month, it changed. They're now behind Milwaukee. Uh, it's not far. It's a half game, but they've fallen down. You see the numbers here. It's also starting to impact the cascade on their bullpen. Like they're not getting these long starts. It starts affecting your bullpen. Green and Lodolo are built to be their one two from now moving forward for the next few years. They need that to start happening by about the third week of August. Yeah, he's on his way. It's just going to take a couple weeks. Hunter's a Cali guy, and the Dodgers getting reinforcement in the form of Clayton Kershaw at some point. I remember, Joel, thinking in June, where the heck would the Dodgers be without Clayton Kershaw and in a rotation full of youth? His void is missed. Yeah, you know, in mid-June, you could have made a case he was on the way to win his first Cy Young in 10 years and his fourth overall. He was as good as anyone in the National League. He hasn't pitched, I think, since June 17th. And the Dodgers recognized the problem with the rotation. Dustin May lost for the year. Tony Gonsolin good, but not as good as last year. Julio Urias in his walk here threw five shutout innings against Oakland, but I would keep in mind it's Oakland. He has been really inconsistent this season, and they were counting on a lot of rookies. Miller Grove, Sheehan. Sheehan went to the bullpen yesterday. Uh, they traded for Lance Lynn. They tried to trade for Eduardo Rodriguez. Rodriguez, and the trade fell apart. They brought in Ryan Yarborough. But you look at this and you think, who pitches game one? The guy who pitched the simulated game yesterday, Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw. He, but it's a shoulder injury. He's had back problems over the years. How does he hold up from here until whenever it is the Dodgers play their last game of the season? It feels like he's as important a guy coming back from an injury as anyone. After all these years, the Dodgers need Clayton Kershaw to I still hear, be their ace. Isn't that something? I hear Vince Scully, the late great Vince Scully, Clayton Kershaw, the best they have. I was reading on the Orange County Register of the Angels optimistic about Mike Trout. And whenever you look in the dugout, he's right there. We were talking earlier this week about Shohei Otani getting walked. Now when he comes back yeah you know the 15 runs in their last six games the angels you wouldn't think offense is their problem but they're two and four in that they're starting to lose connection a little like they took a big gamble by not trading otani they're behind even seattle now in the al west they saw the other al west teams that are not seattle texas and houston bulk up i think they're four back in the wild card the last time they made the playoffs was 2014 that's tied with the tigers for the longest 
In 2014, Mike Trout was 22 and won the first of his three uh, MVPs. He turns 32 next week. Sure. And he hasn't been to the playoffs in that period of time. He broke the hammy boat in, in his hands. He started to take some dry swings yesterday. Look, it, it's their, the best version of them is Otani and Trout. The best version of them have never made the playoffs together. If Otani's leaving, this is their last best shot to do it together and probably their last best shot to convince Otani to stay that they could actually be the kind of team that can make the playoffs. That description of the decade is hard to think about. What about Chris Sale? Do I have time, J-Mac? 45 seconds to get in on Chris Sale? I, I, I saw him in spring training. He had a pep in his step. When he left, he said, I was having fun again. Any updates on him? You know, he's only made 22 starts in the last four years. Uh, you know, I think they think they're going to get him back. I think they think they're going to get Tana Houck back. I think they think they're going to get Whitlock back. They didn't add pitching at the deadline. By the way, they, th they thought they were going to get Trevor Story back today to play shortstop. His rehab's going to last a little longer. Boston, for sure, it's internal improvement, especially the pitching. Can Chris Sale do six, seven, eight starts of some level, even hybrid, three to six innings to help them down the stretch? And by the way, will he be Chris Sale when he does it? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a big story. They, again, they're another team like the Angels. They're starting to lose contact a little bit. They need these pitchers to come back and lengthen the uh, the, the pitching staff. Time will tell. Joel Sherman, thanks so much.